All right, in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about the smudge tool as well as our blur options, okay? So smudge tool is gonna be this one right in between the paintbrush and the eraser. Okay, now if we click on this, you'll see it will bring up all of our brush options for using the smudge tool, okay? So I'm gonna go with just the round brush here, okay? I'm gonna bring it back, I'm gonna bring up the opacity all the way, and if we look in our layers, you can see I have three layers here. I have this ball layer, I have this highlight layer, and I have this background image layer, okay? We're gonna start with the ball layer, okay? So with the ball layer, if I have my smudge tool, you can see that the ball and its shadow are all both on the same layer, okay? I'm going to go ahead and select the ball layer so that we don't actually get smudged outside of the shape of our sphere. And what your job is going to be is to use a smudge tool to blend the shadow on this so that it doesn't look like such a hard crisp line, okay? So I'm gonna do an example. You're gonna download this and be able to do the exact same thing, okay? So I'm gonna bring up my brush size a little bit more. And you can see that as I run my brush along here, it starts to blend it out, okay? Now, at first, it's pretty, whoops, you wanna make sure you're pushing outwards as well, otherwise you'll catch the edge of the image. It's pretty thin, right? But our goal is to use this to try and blend it out to get as smooth of a gradient as possible. Okay, and once again, you're gonna wanna make sure you're really careful to watch that edge so you don't pull in any of the background image. Okay. And you can see, as I've done here, we've really smoothed that out and made it feel a little bit more like a gradient, okay? Next, we're gonna do the highlight. Now you can see that even though the highlight is on a different layer, when we smudge this, it's still going to interact with the layer beneath it, okay? So whether it's on the same layer or a different layer, you can still use the smudge tool and it's still going to mix with the colors around it to be able to give you that effect, okay? So you can see that as we smudge this, it just blurs things in a little bit. You can make it as small or big as you want. Maybe you want the highlight to be tiny, right? You can smudge it in on itself a little more. Okay. Something like that. All right, so there you go. That's how you use a smudge tool. We'll go over it a little bit more when we're actually using it in a painting and we'll show some examples. I don't use it very often. I just prefer to blend with my paintbrush, but sometimes there is a use for the smudge tool. The only problem with it is that a lot of times it can very quickly look fake or amateurish, so you wanna be careful and use it sparingly. Now let's talk about the blur settings, okay? So if I come down here and click on our background image and come up to our adjustments menu, which is this little wand tool, you can see we have these, we have Gaussian blur, motion blur, and perspective blur, okay? So Gaussian blur, if we click on that, it'll bring up a slider at the top of our menu, and if we slide our finger across the screen, we can choose how strong this is. Now this is just gonna blur everything with a Gaussian blur, and depending on how far we take it is how much it will be blurred. This can be useful for doing out of focus backgrounds in a painting, and things like that, or making something glow, right? So I'll give you an example. Let's say we want this ball to be glowing. I can duplicate this layer. I set it to something like, let's say, screen or add, we'll do add, okay? Set it to add, and then we go ahead and Gaussian blur it. You can see that it will create this glow effect, okay? So that's one use of Gaussian blur, okay? Let's go ahead and go back so that we have our, well, no, we can leave it like that, that's fine. Okay, so we have Gaussian blur. We also have, if we turn that layer off for a second, we come to our ball and we select motion blur, okay, we can do the same thing. So you can slide this, and depending on what angle you slide from, like if you go up and down, it'll do it that way. If you go left to right, it'll do it that way. And it'll just give the effect that it's moving fast through space. Okay, this might be the type of thing that you wanna do once you've compressed a lot of your layers, right? So like my, I would probably want my highlight layer and the ball layer compressed in order to have it affect the highlight as well evenly. But there's a motion blur effect. Use it pretty sparingly. It can have a really nice effect when it's done well, but it can also really destroy an image when it's done too much. So keep that in mind. So there's motion blur, okay? Let's turn that off. Uh, the next one is perspective blur. So perspective blur, 
you have this point here, and depending on where you put the point, that's where it's going to be the center of focus for the perspective blur. So if we put it way over here in the corner and then slide the perspective blur up, it's going to blur from that point, right? But if we move it over here to the center, right, you can see the focal point is going to be right in the middle of that ball. So this can be really effective for creating sort of a field of depth sort of look. It's not super accurate, so you want to be careful and use it sparingly. If you have a really clean cut composition with a really straightforward sort of perspective, this can work really nicely. If not, you might want to do this by hand with the smudge tool. There's that one. That's it for our blurs and smudges. Just experiment with these, you know, maybe you've already done a painting and you think it could benefit from this. Try going back and adding this and seeing how it works with the image. That's it for this lecture and I'll see you guys in the next one.